Hello everyone, this is L2 coming at you with another video. Uh, just wanted to uh, talk about some things that are going on in the world of politics. And if you haven't uh, been watching uh, as far as politics, the Republican uh, National Convention started today. And I've been watching it, and there is a big uproar on the grassroots organization, the Stop Trump organization. They tried to get a, 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 a roll call, another roll call for Trump's nomination, and it seems like the uh, Rance Priebus, the RNC uh, um, um, head, had just rolled right through it and everything. So I'm going to get back to listening to that. So if you haven't seen it, take note and see what's happening with the RNC, man. As it's you know, uh, Bernie Sanders has um, uh, conceded defeat uh, by Hillary Clinton to be um, um, the presidential nominee. So uh, Hillary is now the presumptive presidential candidate for the uh, Democratic Party. And Bernie has finally endorsed Hillary as uh, um, trying to get his side of the people um, coming over to in, in to back Hillary. So Bernie Sanders has endorsed Hillary. And another thing that I was watching on one, on one of the news channels, you know, I always watch MSNBC and CNN and sometimes Fox, I'll admit that. But um, I was watching uh, as one of the uh, news programs and they were interviewing people, you know, that were Bernie supporters and, you know, talking to them about, you know, now that Bernie has dropped out of the race and is endorsing Hillary, well, who are they going to follow? Will they um, automatically go to Trump or, I mean, automatically go to Hillary or go to Trump? And there was this interview they did with um, this uh, black man, an African-American man, uh, it's, and he was with an organization called Black Men for Bernie, okay? I've never heard of it before. I only, he only saw it on this his, um, uh, interview on MSNBC. And they were asking him, you know, okay, now that Bernie has dropped out of the race, are you going to be endorsing Hillary? Will you vote for Hillary? And this black man said that, no, he was not going to vote for Hillary now that Bernie has dropped out because he didn't find Hillary to be honest and trustworthy. You know, okay, given the fact that, you know, her email scandal that she had, you know, the Benghazi thing that she had and the Libya stuff, you know, yeah, there, there's, some, there's some funny stuff going on there, you know, but... You know, for this black man to say that, you know, he, now that Bernie has dropped out and black men for Bernie are not going to be voting for Hillary. You know, I kind of want to put it in, in a, um, uh, an educational scenario here. You know, say like you have a child that has special needs, you know, at a school and you want some services for your child, you know, and then the school says, well, we have um, option A that we can do, or we have option B that we can do. Option A isn't really the best of things, you know, for, for providing services with your child, and really neither is option B. So option A would be like Bernie Sanders who dropped out of the race, okay? This is what we can do for you, but it has its downfalls. It's not really there. Option B is something that is tangible, that is there for us to do for your child, but it will not meet all of your child's needs. So if option A doesn't meet all of your child's needs, but there are some things and, you know, the bottom could drop out of that as Bernie Sanders, you know, um, dropping out of the race. And then option B, where is like the Hillary, where we have these services for you, they're not the best either but it's still going to provide some type of services for for your child, you know? So what do you do? Do you go option A or option B, or do you do nothing at all? See, that's kind of what, you know, the, the that's kind of how I see these black men for Bernie doing, whereas Bernie was option A, the services for your child where the bottom dropped out of it, okay, it's not there anymore. Then option B is the Hillary, where we have services for your child. They're still not the best, but it's something there. It's something there. Does a parent say, oh, 
Option A isn't really viable, so I can't do that. Option B, well, I don't like that either, so don't do anything for my child. You know, that's kind of what I'm seeing on there. I may be wrong, I may be right, who knows? You know, you make that decision and everything. And then um, I also liked our uh, uh, Supreme Court Justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Way to go. Way to go, Justice Ginsburg, on talking about Donald Trump. It's kind of some of the things I used to do when I was a principal or even when I was a teacher. You know, you do something, you know, even if it wasn't too crazy, and then you ask forgiveness later. I kind of think that's what uh, Justice Ginsburg, Ginsburg did. You know, she slammed Donald Trump, you know, and then comes back and says, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that, but it's out there. Um, one other thing that I was listening to, also uh, the NAACP, you know, they'll usually extend invitations for uh, presidential candidates to come and speak before their group and everything. Donald Trump declined the NAACP invitation to speak at one of their conferences. You know, his, his, his support rating is zero among African Americans, so maybe he thought, oh, it's zero, it's not going to make any difference or anything like that. But, you know, hey, Donald, you know, you still have some black supporters out there, you know, like it or not. You know, you did have a black man out there. You say, hey, there's my African-American. Don't you remember that, Donald? And then you're not going to go speak in front of the NAACP? Uh, just recently, Hillary was extended an invitation, and I believe today she is speaking with the NAACP. Also talking about Donald Trump's vice presidential uh, uh, can't pick, uh, Mike, Mike Pence and everything. So it's Trump Pence. I saw someone on Facebook say Trump Pence TP toilet paper, but anyways, yeah, uh, yeah, he had uh, picked his uh, VP running mate and everything, and I saw an interview on it, and you know, we'll we'll have to see how 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 things go with them. And now moving on to some of the educational and social pieces that I told you that I would uh, be doing flashbacks from. Um, I, you know, as I said before, I used to do a lot of journal writing, and I kind of still do, but not as much as I used to. But uh, I have a couple of entries here that I did uh, back in uh, July 13th, 1998. July 13th, 1998. Uh, I was writing, summer is coming to a close, and I'm going to get back into the swing of things when uh, August comes around. Uh, I had just moved back from uh, Houston. Uh, my partner and I at the time, we lived in Houston. He worked in Houston and I worked in Houston as well. I worked with the A-Leaf School District there. I was a fourth grade math and science teacher. Uh, left Houston, came back to Austin, and I had gotten a job at a middle school, Webb Middle School, where I was the first, um, not the first, but uh, sixth grade toss master and then the principal moved me into uh, eighth grade math and algebra position there at uh, Webb Middle School. My first year as principal of Maplewood Elementary School. This was July 23rd, 2003 and it was mostly about um, I had just a, a couple of friends of, of mine and I had taken a last summer trip down to Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi and you know just having some fun time on the beach and stuff like that you know and just having a nice little summer vacation and everything so um, yeah and actually that's when I got my first tattoo uh, back in 2003 and it's this tattoo here I don't know if you can see it or anything but yeah got that tattoo first one you know and then this one and just a little update on the China situation. Um, all of my paper, I think I've told you all my paperwork has been sent over to China uh, through the school. The school has given it to the Chinese government. And now I just have to wait for the Chinese government to approve all of my paperwork. And then they'll send me the two letters of um, approval that I need to take to the Chinese embassy in Houston, Texas to get my work visa. So that's gonna be a couple of weeks. You know, there's, you know, I, I, I don't like to talk about it, but there is the possibility that they could disapprove my documents or something. I don't know, but I'm not, I don't wanna think about that. But yeah, that's where I am on the Chinese thing and I even been packing up the house and getting things done uh, with, with all of that. 
Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, like or subscribe. If you have any comments, make the comments down below. I try to make videos every week, so be on the lookout. This is L2 to you. I'm out.